The Enemy of the World is a very entertaining break from the second Doctor's base under siege stories and I found myself thoroughly engaged for all six parts of it. This one takes place in 2018 and the premise of this is that there is a doppelganger of the Doctor called Salamander and he is working on some very suspicious things and the Doctor and company investigate what's going on and work with spies to expose him for his crimes. Firstly, I do like that this is indeed a break from what they usually do in the second Doctor stories and everybody gets a chance to try something else. Of course, Troughton does more so than the others, but we'll come back to that. I really like how this story really is a spy thriller and we have these different sides and the more of the story we watch, the more we understand the complexity of the situation. I really did find myself thoroughly entertained by this story and I thought it was quite well paced too. I never really found myself bored with this one and this episode comes in at 2 hours and 20 minutes so they definitely did quite a good job of keeping me engaged throughout all of these parts and I think that the 6 parts really gave it a good room to breathe and 5 parts probably would have been a bit too small for what they were working with, 4 parts are the same, you'd have to really cut some stuff that I think is really interesting to get the story down this small so I was happy that this one was six parts and really had the room to breathe that it needed to explore all these different angles of this situation which I found particularly interesting. Also I really enjoyed how quickly our characters get thrust into the scenario and have to work out what's going on. In the first episode, our characters get shot at and then find themselves with some people where they learn about Salamander, who's identical to the Doctor. So I just really liked how quickly everyone got thrust into the situation and then the episode kept moving and moving and moving and like I said, I was not bored. And I do really want to talk about Salamander, which is to be expected and... I think he's really good. I love seeing Patrick Troughton in this part and he brings a real sense of menace to this character but still keeps him just a little bit collected and intelligent. He's very ruthless and he's very manipulative and when we learn more about what he's doing then we get a better sense of just how truly cruel this man is and I just think he works very well in this one and it's just a lot of fun to see Patrick Troughton have so much fun playing another character. So obviously the Doctor and Salamander are doppelgangers, which if you want an explanation for, you will not find it in the story. And yeah, that's a cheesy thing. You kind of have to get past that. I was able to. I didn't particularly care that much. I got really wrapped up in the story and I thought that going with the premise that they had, they had some really interesting stuff going on here. And of course, some expected stuff with the Doctor impersonating Salamander. That's kind of what you're going to get in this story. But I really just enjoyed the elements of the story that we had going on at felt different from previous stories. It's a spy thriller and we get some really interesting stuff throughout it. But because they are identical, they chose two main ways to distinguish the characters. One is in the way that they dress and the other is in the way that they speak. Now this is a very simple, effective way to do it. You don't need to do anything else. Except I actually lied to you. They did do something else. They darkened Patrick Troughton's face for the role because the character is Mexican and they thought that they needed to darken Patrick Troughton's face because reasons and no good reasons actually and that's the thing they really didn't need to darken his face for this story to work just don't darken his face it's as simple as that looking at this from a story perspective it wouldn't have really changed anything to have just made it be another white character like the doctor there's absolutely no reason that they had to do this it's kind of a pill you have to swallow and that really sucks because it's an element of this story. It's a product of its time because this is from the 1960s. It is British television from the 60s. And this is what you're going to get. And yeah, it sucks. That it's really a shame, especially since this one is such an enjoyable story. I was able to enjoy the rest of the episode for what it was. I was even able to enjoy the character of Salamander. It was just a shame to me that they darkened Patrick Troughton's face. I think it was very unnecessary. They did not need to do it, and it being from that time doesn't excuse it. It's still a bad thing. I'd also like to talk about the filmmaking of this story. There are some really nice shots in this one, especially in the first part, which are pretty impressive for a 1960s bit of television, and not to mention the scenes that they have with the Doctor and Salamander meeting up, which for what they could do back in the day is pretty impressive and I think quite well done. I do really like Jamie in this story. As always, he's funny and entertaining and has a pretty good head on his shoulders and we get to see him do a bit of infiltration, which is quite fun. I think Victoria is honestly fine. She really doesn't have much to do here. Jamie gets more to do than her. And yeah, she's fine. She helps out a little bit, but not very much. And of course, I still love the second Doctor. There is admittedly less of him in this story than normal, which is only to be expected because we have Salamander in this one. But what we do get is really entertaining, and he's still a lot of fun and has some good lines in this story. 
So I do have a couple of spoiler things that I want to discuss. If you want to avoid those, skip the time as shown on screen. But if you're going to stick with me, then let's discuss some spoilers. So we do find out about halfway through the story that Salamander has a bunker of people that he has tricked into thinking there was, you know, a nuclear war. And now he is working with them to create these weather events to try to clean up the surface. And that's a really interesting element in this story, I think, because it adds an extra level to it that kind of gives you a little bit more insight into just this character of Salamander and how messed up he is. And it also adds the subplot that builds and builds and just gives you a little bit more from this one. I think if you didn't have that, then yeah, you could have shrunk the story to four parts, but it doesn't have as much interest in it. And I really liked what was going on down there. So I really appreciated that being added to it. And this two and a half hour episode having so much interesting stuff in it, because if you compare it to episodes like particularly The Abominable Snowman, I think there's a little bit less going on there. That one could have been four parts. And this episode has the kind of thing you need to lengthen it by another two parts. And that lengthening it develops the story further, gives you a little bit more insight into characters, and is very interesting. So I like what's done with that and the way all that stuff resolves. And talking about the actual final scene of the story and the final episode, this one I think is 22 minutes, if I recall correctly. And that's a little bit weird because normally episodes are 25 minutes. I mean, they do vary a little bit. But, you know, I think I remember hearing that this one was cut short because they had some stuff planned for the final scene, but they weren't able to film it because of complications or it just didn't work for whatever reason. And that's a shame because I would have liked to, you know, had a little bit more at the end because it definitely feels like it has a rushed ending. The ending, story-wise, was rushed because they weren't able to film the final moments, which, to me, you know, is a shame. But still, I like the story and I like its conclusion, even though it is a little bit rushed in its final moments. Overall, this episode was really entertaining. I found myself thoroughly engaged in this spy thriller and had a lot of fun watching the Doctor and Companions effectively being spies for so much of this one. Patrick Troughton gives two great performances in this story and he was a ton of fun. This episode didn't feel dragged out and went on very near to the right length. I really enjoyed this story and I'm going to give The Enemy of the World a rating of 8.5 out of 10. So this marked the end for Ennis Lloyd as producer, this story, and he contributed to the show for a couple of years, and I want to just keep track of the different producers at different eras. I know people do that for Classic Who at least later in it. I don't know if they do it as much earlier on, but I do want to keep track of, you know, which people contributed to which different parts of the show, and just kind of keep my eye on that so that I'm aware of who the producer is for the period in time that I am watching. And yeah, that's about all I have to say for that. I hope you join me again Sunday when I'll be doing a Doctor Who ranking video. I don't yet know what it will be, but I will figure something out and release it on Sunday. And the Sunday after that, we will be returning to Classic Doctor Who reviews. It is the web of fear that time, an episode I definitely have some thoughts on. And I'm very happy to say I completely caught up on schedule to where I wanted to be for this month of April. I caught up with all the ones I missed out on previously, and it's back to business as usual with one classic Doctor Who review a week, except when there is a ranking or a season review. So I hope you will enjoy a more normal pace for these reviews as opposed to the bit of an overload that we had in April. And I hope you enjoyed as many as I did do in April, and I hope you had fun with them. And with all that said, that's going to be it for now, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and have a lovely week.